Well, welcome back guys. Um, not the sort of thing you find on your workbench every day. <laughs> it's an RC45. It's not the most beautiful example of an RC45 I've ever seen. Um, race bodywork, it's, it's obviously seen a bit of action, but it's still an RC45 and it's still on my bench. Reason it's here, um, it's one of them. I seem to attract these motorbikes, so it's been somewhere else. It's got this weird starting issue where as you go to start it, start again, Jim, it's got this weird cold starting issue. Once, once you've actually coaxed it into life and the engine's hot, it runs fine. When you try and start it from cold, it fires initially and then it sort of peters out and you've got to just fight and fight and fight and just catch it right and you get it to keep going long enough, then it'll burst into life and it's okay. Um, it's been somewhere else. It's already had the parts gun. Parts gun? It's already had the parts shotgun well and truly fired at it, I think. Talking to the owner, it's had coils and this and that and the other. Um, yeah, one of them. Let me get you a better camera angle and I'll try and start it and I'll show you what's going on with it. Okie dokie. So, I do have a manual choke on these, but it's just uh, it just opens some plungers basically in the throttle bodies to for a fast idle anyway. So, choke on. It basically does that. So it catches and effectively starts and runs for a second or two, and it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what you do with the throttle. If anything, more throttle makes it worse. Give it throttle and it dies. So, how to skin this? Um, when you're doing this sort of diagnostic work, how to say this? try not to get um, pulled in lots of different directions. So go back to basics, compression, ignition, and fuel. Now you've got to make a decision, you know, initially which direction, can't speak, which direction am I going to go in? Now, there's no um, FI warning light. I'm not sure whether the camera's seeing that. There's two lights here on the dashboard. When I turn the ignition on, the FI light comes on momentarily and then goes off. Does some basic. The ECU is looking for some, you know, some parameters back. It's not particularly um, these um, PGM FI early Honda fuel injection systems, not massively complicated. So there's no O2 sensors on the exhaust. There's, it, it, I won't go down a rabbit hole, but fairly not antiquated because that's not the right word but a fairly basic fuel injection system um why am i saying that the fi light goes out so initially i'm thinking you know basic sort of sensor values and stuff are in the ballpark my spider sense is telling me and i might be wrong maybe fuel pressure i'm not going to worry about compression testing it at this point or worrying about anything mechanical because once it's actually started and you've got it warm it starts perfectly when it's hot it rides makes loads of power it's all fine so i'm not mechanically i'm not worried about the engine so that leaves ignition and fuel you sort of got to make a determin determination which way you're going to go with those two i'm going fuel so two ways we can or two things i'm going to do i'm going to connect a fuel pressure gauge up to the pump and see what that physical fuel pressure is and I'll probably get my Pico scope and I'll back probe a couple of the injectors and just see pulse width of the injectors to see you know if we've got fuel pressure and the injectors opening for the right amount of time um, then it's getting fuel technically unless there's something wrong with the injectors but that's Jesus Jimmy waffling that's probably unlikely an injector fault because once it is warm it's fine could be partially blocked Probably not though, because it's not like a single cylinder misfire anyway. So let me get the tank and the bodywork and bits and pieces off so we can get some stuff. And let's do some basic tests and see if we can find out what's going on. Righty ho, so seat units off, which was just resting on there anyway, tanks up. Um, 
There's a little blanking screw here on the banjo for the feed out of the fuel pump, so take that out. Pretty sure I've got an adapter, and let's let's uh, connect up to this and do the fuel pressure measurement before we do anything else. So I think it's that one. Uh, let's get the bolts out the bottom of the tank and spill fuel everywhere and uh, find out. Right, I'm going to have my hand in the shot, am I? So this, if my memory serves me correctly, is a 6mm thread. Uh, yes. And this little jobby isn't fucking long enough. Are you having a giraffe? Doesn't reach. Uh oh. Let's put that back in. <laughs> Leaking everywhere. Uh, what am I going to do now? Need a plan B. Uh, right, stand by. I'll come up with some sort of plan. Right, my plan is I've got a plan. I'm going to get to the other end. I've got another adapter that will go on the other end of the pipe, but the airbox is in the way. Interesting. This isn't the original top of the airbox. It's got some, uh, I don't know. Um, let's get the airbox out of the way and I'll show you the pipe. Not really a top tip um, because it's so obvious, but if you're removing an airbox like this, I'm not sure if this is coming out on camera or not, um, and you're disconnecting sensors and hoses and stuff, obviously if you try and run the engine without the airbox, like there's an air temperature sensor there, there's a map sensor on each side, there's stuff going on, there's vacuum pipes that are now open. Remember that you've got to have the sensors connected if you're going to try and do any sort of running of anything and any sort of diagnostic work. So you've got to, you've got to it's going to be out of focus if I do this, but you've got to pull stuff out the back, bottom of the airbox to... You know what I'm saying. Uh, right, so the reason I took the airbox off is, let me get you a better shot of that. So the reason I took the airbox off is the other end of this fuel pipe. I've got this little nut, which I'm hoping will fit. This is for... VFR 750s and I, I bought the original Honda nut and I drilled and tapped a hole in it so I could screw that into it and I think that's the same so I can connect to there instead let's undo that and see if that works okay that's gonna work and then that can screw on there like that he says, why is that so tight? Oh, I've got my O-ring jammed. Right, that's better. Right, connect the other end of that up to my pressure gauge. Let's prime this fuel pump, Let's see what happens. Right, so I've got my gauge connected. I've got the tank down because um, there's not a huge amount of fuel in it, so I want the pump properly submerged. So keep your peepers on that, and let me turn the ignition on. Stand by. Oh, that doesn't look great, does it? So you could, ha, uh, right, you could get yourself into trouble here, because the suspension, suspected that's not what i'm trying to say the expected fuel pressure is i just looked in the manual it's 38 psi so if you did this test you think well 38 psi that's fine did you see how slow that was to rise to build pressure that's definitely not right they normally bang and the other thing um which is probably not going to translate very well to video is the fuel pump sounds a little bit weird it sounds 
how would you describe it? It sounds a bit like it's sort of just freewheeling. It's not really under load, if that makes any sense. Um, let's just get the pressure out of there and redo that test again. Yeah, there's something very wrong there. It doesn't even make it to full fuel pressure on the prime. Right, so there's another test you can do. In fact, there's a couple of things you can do, and I'll show you one of them. One of the things you can do with this system, in fact, let me, before I start waffling, let me get the fuel tank up out the way and I can show you the pipes. Right, okay, so we're the other side now, just so we've got a better view of what's going on under here. So this is, there are two types of setups you'll find on motorbikes. Um, almost always the fuel t pump is inside the fuel tank, but that is not exclusively that, like some of the early Hayabusa's had an external pump for the fuel injection, but generally the, the, the pump is going to be inside the fuel tank. Um, you have, with this system, you have a line coming out of the fuel pump to the fuel rail. The fuel rail is the, the part of the throttle body that provides the four injectors, or sometimes eight injectors, but in this case four. The fuel rail is the part that provides, distrib distributes, if you like is a better word, distributes the fuel to all the injectors. So the fuel, make, fuel pump makes pressure, a lot of pressure, goes down this line, feeds these injectors, and then on the end here of the fuel rail is a fuel pressure release valve. So when it gets to its desired 38 PSI, this is, it's not very technical in there. I've chopped one open, there's a ball bearing and a spring and the spring is the right weight. And it, anyway, yeah, so it blows the valve off its seat and this is the return line. Now with some bikes, this pressure release valve, sorry if I'm waffling on, this is old news to a lot of you, I'm sure, but I'm sure you might find it interesting. So with a lot of bikes, this fuel pressure regulator is inside the fuel tank, right on the pump. And that's called a returnless type pump because this one has a return line, but the type with this pressure release valve inside the fuel tank, it only has one line, so it doesn't have a return. The reason I'm telling you that is there's another test you can do. Let's get this gauge and it's a bit, uh, it can maybe get you into trouble, but it's one way of testing the pump. If you're, well, no, actually that's not true. It's a way of testing. Let's not go into that. Let me just show you the test. I don't want to um, overcomplicate this. Where's my pliers? So you get a pair of pliers and you can only do it if the fuel line is rubber, but you can squash this fuel line with your pliers, yeah? So when it primes, like this, see I get extra pressure. That way you can see the maximum pressure that um, pump is capable of making in this in this case close to 70 psi which I think is low for one of these but that's not a I'm just showing that test because it's kind of interesting to do sometimes um, the other test my brain's not working this morning so sorry it's the next day you don't realize this watching the video but a couple of shots ago that was the end of the day and I'm back at it now after a weekend so I'm sort of gathering my thoughts back together again um the next test, which is the conclusive test, there's a flow test you can do. Don't know what the spec is for this. I'm going to go look it up. And then what you do is you take the return line off, put it in a jug and you measure it over time. I already know though that the um, it's hardly moving any fuel because my gauge has this little valve here I can open. Oh God, spraying fuel everywhere. And it's for bleeding off the pressure in this pipe. Normally, get to the point, Jim, normally when I'm doing a fuel pressure test, if I hold this valve in and the pump runs, fuel sprays out of here like a hose pipe. Let me show you what happens, um, if I can do it. I think I kind of need three hands. Uh, hang on. Because I know it's not going to spray fuel everywhere, I'll just put a bit of rag on there. And I'll hold that like that and I'll open the valve is this in shot and in focus sorry I think it might be slightly out of focus guys you're gonna to have to live with it though right so push that valve prime it like a, a tiny little dribble of fuel that should be like literally spraying everywhere 
something's wrong with this fuel pump. So you can understand, you could get yourself, which is maybe why this bike's had the parts shotgun, because people have not been paying enough attention or not experienced enough to know exactly, you know, that seeing that gauge rise slowly, fucking I'll get to the point, Jim. Seeing that gauge rise slowly up to the desired correct fuel pressure could throw you if you didn't realise that it should rise much more swiftly, if that, if that makes sense. Moral of the story, even if you've got pressure, make sure you've also got flow as well, if that makes sense. Um, next step is, I'm going to pull this fuel pump out the bottom of this tank. Let's see what's going on. Sometimes you can have a split in a, I, I can't, I don't know what the design is inside here. Um, I can't ever remember having a fuel pump out of one of these. You see so few of these RC45s that I, I don't know, I can't remember what it's like in there, but sometimes there's, they have an internal fuel filter and I've seen fuel filters split inside and pipes break and it, so there could be stuff going on with the pump and the actual motor pump assembly is fine. Anyway, let's get it out of the tank and stop talking and have an actual look at it. Right, so that's the pump off. Um, very, very generic sort of motorbike setup that. So there's a pump assembly here, which is an electric motor and gubbins. There's a gauze filter, which is in the bottom of the fuel tank. Pump sucks up through the gauze filter, through a bit of pipe, through a fuel filter, through another bit of pipe and out the bottom, like super simple setup. So the things that you tend to see, these pipes are sometimes got a leak or a split. An, an initial eyeball, they look okay. Um, and of course, the motor itself can fail in some way. You know, something can go wrong internally. You can't get inside these pumps there. You know, they're sealed up. And then there's a fuel filter there, which I suspect has been in there since 1994. So, you know, given the, it'll build pressure, but it won't flow. I mean, it could be as simple as a dirty fuel filter. Um, I'm gonna get this apart, decide which way I'm gonna skin it. I think, unless the fuel filter's obviously block solid, I'll, I'll get a pump and a filter for it. I think that's what's going to happen. Oh, is that coming out on camera? Oh, that's silt. Oh. It's really hard to blow through. Okay. Be nice if that was the reason, wouldn't it? I haven't obviously got one of these, but I might have something that will... Let me go and have a look. I might have a Triumph one that's a similar sort of setup to that, that which will do their, their high pressure filters, you see. That's, the, that's why it's metal. It's got to withstand the fuel pressure. But that's, yeah, that feels... Hard to blow. See what sort of filter I've got. Well, that's annoying. I've normally got some fuel filters in stock, but I seem to not have for some reason. Um, just looked on the Honda website on the parts fiche, no longer available. And if it was available, it's like a hundred quid for that filter. So I'm going to do something. There are a couple of um, aftermarket high pressure filters I can get next day delivery. Let's get a filter for there, make it fit, because there's space there for it. Um, and yeah, let's let's do that first before we condemn the pump, I think. I'd just be interested in, because that's really hard to blow through and probably not coming out on camera, but there's all this silt coming out of it. Let's do that, I'll get a filter for tomorrow. So you'll the next shot will be the filter in there, but for me it's a day. I'll order one now and we'll We'll go from there. Okay guys, um, just doing a little bit more experimentation. I just, I wanted to prove my theory really. I didn't want to waste time ordering a filter and then it not be that and then it need a pump. So what I've done is, I, it's a little bit Heath Robinson and it's obviously not permanent, but the, the, the pump is back in and it's got a normal, um, standby, I'll get one to show you. It's got a normal low pressure type 
you know, carbureted bike fuel filter on it just for now. It's fine just to, you know, prove a point and it's exactly the same. So it's not the filter. And what I've also just done, just to sort of prove my theory. I'm an idiot. I'm actually an idiot. Um, it's not fuel pressure. My little Heath Robertson fucking fuel gauge attachment the end of the banjo bolt when this little nut screws on the end of the banjo bolt is i hadn't noticed but with the vfr 750s that this was made for the center of the banjo bolt is hollow if you like but on this it's solid on the top and when you tighten this down the end of the bolt presses on the top of the fucking anyway i'm a, I'm a retard all that stuff you just watched yeah, it's not fuel pressure. There's a reason why they put the fuel pressure outlet on the bottom of the pump there. Um, I haven't tested it, but uh, with the pipe off the throttle bodies, just from the pump straight into a jug, it's fucking gushing fuel out like you'd expect. <sighs> fucking hell. Sorry, that's how easy it is to make silly little mistakes and go off down a fucking tangent. Um, so it still won't. Let me show you it trying to start. Still doing the same thing. But interestingly, Pretty sure it is lean because if you give it a little snifter of fuel in each of these four inlets, I will show you. Very, very Heath Robinson. Don't do this at home. Do as I say, not as I do. But this is like proper old school diagnostic. So a tiny little snifter of fuel in these inlets. Go to start it. It's lean for some reason. Um, I'm going to get me oscilloscope now. I'm going to go to the uh, back probe the injectors, see what sort of a pulse width we've got. If that's looking about right, pull the injectors, possibly blocked injectors. Anyway, fucking hell, round the houses. Uh, get me oscilloscope connected. In fact, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea before I do that. My head's gone. Right, see you in a bit. <laughs> 